Hey everyone, it's Sandra with Gilligan here, and I've set up to do a little bit of a deep dive into Gilligan and to see what's happening. Uh, and so what I've done is I've got one of my empty styrofoam totes here, and I'm going to be removing some of the bedding um, from Gilligan. You'll notice the shredded leaves have actually started to drop down quite considerably already. Um, they, I don't think these leaves are getting eaten yet. Um, I think it's what's happening down below. So that's what I'm curious about. So I don't see any worms on this burlap blanket up through the leaves. So I'll just put that aside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig deeper down here and just see what's going on and then bring you back when I have something to show you. Okay, stay tuned. I'm barehanding it because you know this is beautiful material. I'm not, um, you know, wait until I see a spider and then you'll then you'll know. There's still sticks, sticks and, and whole leaves in here, but a lot of this is, is just like finished castings, so. So let's just keep going down. I started this bin with 50 egg cartons and I dampened them down and then I put um, quite a bit of coffee grounds on top of it as well as a little bit of alfalfa meal. So I'm down quite deep now. Worms. I'm down quite deep for me but Gilligan still has a lot more depth. These are castings, what I am seeing. I'm, this is an avocado pit, not soft enough to, to squeeze yet. Remember, I put a lot of avocado pits in Gilligan, so I'm just in that area, actually. So I haven't actually reached the egg carton area. Okay, so let me bring you back when I'm seeing egg cartons. Stay tuned. Okay, so I'm starting to dig up egg carton. And you can see the worms, they scattered before I had a chance to put the camera on them. Camera shy. But there were worms in these egg cartons. Um, just anecdotally, I can tell you that the bedding is feeling a lot cooler uh, as I get down into the egg carton layer. So there's more egg cartons. Worms are through them. Uh, then, then it was on these upper layers that do get a little bit of direct sunlight on them every day, uh, either through the lid or we sometimes, most of the times, take the lid off. But there's some egg cartons. They're obviously wet and breaking apart very easily. It's impossible to tell whether the worms have started to diminish the volume of egg cartons or whether they're just breaking apart. All right, so I'm going to go down a little bit deeper and I will bring you back. All right, so I hope you can see, oh, look at the little tiny worm on my hand. I hope you can see down into this hole. Um, there's, I brought out some egg cartons that were still stacked together. Um, I'm seeing worms, not a huge number, but there were worms within these layers of egg carton. They don't look, uh, they don't look like they've, like some of them don't look that discolored. Um, if you can see into the hole, and let me just tip you forward. Can you see more into the hole there? You can see some egg cartons that are still egg carton colored. And not the, um, not the, the, the color that they get when they've been exposed to vermicompost. So here I am right down into them. So they're still stacked together. Quite warm down here. So unlike the edges that were cooler. So I'm not seeing a lot of worm activity in these egg cartons right in this area. And I'm, I'm running into a lot of those avocado pits, which is impairing my ability uh, to, to get a good handle on what's going on under the, under the surface. But 
I think um, we can say that the egg cartons have compressed in height, um, although not necessarily starting to get eaten. So that means that Gilligan's worms are living in this top layer, which I suppose shouldn't surprise any of us. However, uh, they, um, they do have the full, the full run of this whole bin. And I know that last year when we had Gilligan, there were worms throughout. So, you know, I kind of know that, you know, it's kind of the worms are going to go where the worms are going to go. Right. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to give a feeding down this pit and, uh, you know, attract some worms to this area because I'm pretty sure there will be worms that, that want to go down there. So let me just get some food. So continuing on our avocado theme, I've actually got a whole avocado here that obviously was unpalatable for us. So it's gonna go into this pit. I'll give it a few carrot peels and I think that's a kale leaf and a little bit of a lemon. And uh, so that, goes down into the pit with the egg cartons and I'll just turn over some of these bedding leaves, these top bedding leaves into this pit and then I'm going to dig another trench and give these worms another feeding. All right, just a moment. Here's one of our previous feeding zones and you can see that the worms are very active in this area they are still getting into these av rotten avocados that were put in here from before. There's still quite a bit of flesh left in those avocados. Uh, so the worms are all through this area eating and that's good. It's good that they found the food and it's good that they're eating. I can see a lot of castings in this area starting to accumulate. I can see cocoons. So that's good. The worms have been attracted to the area and are finding each other and breeding. So that's exactly what we want to see happen. So I will leave this feeding zone alone and I'm gonna go find another area to give a trench. So this is that near trench where I had the mold. You can see that springtails moved into this. It was a raw, unfrozen banana peel. So have worms but springtails move in. And that's one of the things that Bentley Christie talked about is if the, the food is such that the worms don't get into it quickly, then uh, other critters move in. And certainly I just threw my banana peel straight in from lunch. I didn't freeze it first and I didn't cut it up. And it's obviously taken the worms a little bit longer than normal to get into a banana peel. And as such, we have springtails into it as well not a problem this is an outdoor bin so here you go here's a prior feeding area the worms are still in the area but there's no visible food so I'm going to dig another trench here we go oh and this food is this food no this is this is carbon that I gave them so other than the avocado pits that are now no longer moldy, they just look like they've been stripped clean of any of their residual avocado. I don't see any, I don't see any trace of that moldy feeding. I did pull out the corn cob when I was pulling out all this other uh, material and uh, it was stripped clean. All right, so there's that banana peel with some interest on it. Now this is also raw food straight out of our kitchen. It's never been frozen so it's going to take longer. And look what I'm burying this time. This is a turnip that we harvested and we're not going to eat. I think this will probably still be here in months. May indeed sprout. I'll put it head up like that. There's a couple turnips but I don't think I'll burden Gilligan with both of them right at the moment and these are just Brussels sprout ends and carrot peels and some cucumbers oh and here's some asparagus stems so I'll save this other turnip 
for a while until we see how the rest of these do because I have a feeling they're going to take a while and I'm just going to now that I've seen the size of that trench or the size of the feeding I'm just going to kind of spread it out a little bit wider there we go and there was a lot of egg grit in this area from before so I'm not going to add any more and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tip over this container and I'm hoping I can do this without spilling the worms. I will rinse this out just in case there's a wisp that I missed because there's definitely was worms in it. There's a worm right on the top. This has given the leaves a bit of a mix as well. Obviously there's the banana now closer to the top. And I don't think that's a bad thing that we've mixed it up. It's kind of like aerating for Gilligan. And that will give us, give the worms a different look at, at different uh, bedding and mix the microbes around, which I think is probably more important. The last thing I want to do, other than rinse out that container, is we're adding our compost to our um, beds, our raised beds today, and our vermicompost, the last of it. And I, I just pulled out a clump of worms. So why not give them to Gilligan? They're beautiful, beautiful composting worms that have lived in our compost. And so why not just let them have another life in Gilligan. All right, everyone, that's Gilligan's deep dive for today. Bye for now.